with Herman and Sharon. All right. Okay, I think we're coming in now. Let's step out <laughs> and see the world. Oh, that's, yes, that's let's. the way it looks. Come on out. Leave wow. your cabin in the background there. <laughs> I, know. I know. I just tell her when we're in there. We've got, I don't know if you can see the mountains, but I always, you know, visualize that my house is right there just below that mountain scene because I love mountains. It's always wishing he lived around the mountains, but as long as I'm alive, we're going to we, be in Florida. We live across that right now. the road from the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So she likes Florida weather. I like cold. Mm -hmm. We've been married 60 years. Guess who gets their way? <laughs> That's how you marry 60 years. Okay. But, uh, but our family. But we should. have gone to the mountains That's true. several times. So. We have a good looking couple. Yes, we do, wow. actually. Very nice looking. Wow. Couple. They're from Dallas. We're going to hear about them. We're going to learn more about their life and. All of those reality shows from Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Maybe she's in one of them. She we'll could have to ask her one. about that. She, she, could, she could be in one. <laughs> Autumn and Eddie Miles. She has written her latest book, Gangster Prayer. Mm. Here they come, let's right here. Yeah, let's meet Autumn them. Autumn and Eddie. <laughs> how are you? Hi, how Good are you? Good to see you, Eddie. Good to see you. Good to have you. You've Good morning. Have Hello. Morning. Have a seat Hi, right there. You have a this seat, is your yeah. seat right here. Okay. Yes. I'll come around this way. All right. All right. Thank there you, you thank you, thank you. Get our little wicker chairs. Yes. <laughs> But it's smooth wicker. So it's, yes. Yes. it's nice. It's nice. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to say you won't catch your nylons, but women don't wear nylons anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not anymore. Yeah, so you guys like Dallas. I hear that's where you're from. So yeah. you like that part of the country. Oh, we we love that part of the country. Yeah. Have I, you been I was born, born in Texas, so I, I grew okay. up. No wonder. We got back. Yeah. No we wonder. tell everyone God lives there. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so does a lot of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. That's what we hear. Yeah, yeah. a lot of oil. <laughs> so this book, Gangster yes. Prayer, now, you know, right off the bat, you've never been a gangster's wife, right? No, never. And Eddie is certainly not in that kind of work, no, right? Sir. No. So, Gangster Prayer. Gangster Prayer. Got your attention, yes, didn't it? Yes, yeah. <laughs> if you were saying, you know, in a, if you walked in a Christian bookstore, I guarantee you, they had because you know there's hundreds of books on prayer. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's like times a hundred. I know. And if you saw this, you'd go, oh. Yeah. I guarantee. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it it's a hook. It's a hook. Yes. It's a hook, but it's also the title. There's a reason. There's a reason. It's also the title God gave me. I knew that when I titled a book Gangster Prayer, we would have some eyebrows yeah. raised, yeah, right. and that was the point. And God gave me this title. I was sitting in, um, in my bed, about to go to sleep. I was watching a documentary on real life gangsters and mobsters mm. from the 40s and 50s. Yeah. And I started to become very intrigued by their character traits. They were loyal to the point of committing many crimes mm -hmm. um, because their boss wanted them yes. to, their crime boss wanted them yes. to. So I became addicted to the show, and that was before binge watching yeah. was a thing. So sure. every week I would watch the show, and I was intrigued by their character traits. And I, I, I was sitting in my bed, and the Spirit of God said to me, you think, they're, you think they're passionate? You think they're loyal? They're more passionate about their mission of evil than you are about your mission of prayer. And it... <laughs> it was very convicting, to say the least. Can you stop right there? Yes. Dave, can you get a close-up of Autumn? Would you do that for me? <laughs> okay, we've got enough of the story. Can you do that here with the cameras? Takes a while. <laughs> Takes a while. There we go. Stay right on that. Autumn, Eddie, I've started reading, talked about Eddie. We're going to be talking to him in a little while. Uh, she is the host of the Autumn Miles Show on the Salem Radio Network. Mm -hmm. She has shared her story of overcoming abuse. Yeah. Wow. That was your first marriage. First marriage, domestic violence. And finding God's purpose for her life in media outlets such as The New Yorker, TLC, The 700 Club, Cornerstone TV, and Voice of America. And she writes, so you, you're, How many you're books? Just, you're, which book this is, is my third. 
My yes. third book wow. baby. Yes, yes book it is. baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey Dave, can you give me that little clip of Autumn in her element? Welcome to the Autumn Miles Show with your host, Autumn Miles. Autumn is an author, speaker, wife, and mother. She's the founder and CEO of the Blush Network, the author of Appointed, and Autumn's vision is to engage our culture with the bold truth of God coupled with raw faith. Eddie, wow. now it's your turn. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you meet? We met at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. Hey. You know, all of my kids have gone there. Yeah, oh, right. it's a yeah. phenomenal And our daughter school. met her husband there. Yeah. Our granddaughter graduated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, great wow. place. It's a phenomenal place. Good place, place. to meet your yeah. mate. It's yes, a great place. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma so you, where did you, I mean, on the campus, where was she? We were right outside of Vine Center at Ooh. the at the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew her brother from the year previous uh, and um, saw them walking and stopped in my tracks and had to go meet uh, this beautiful woman walking Did you know me. that was his sister? I, I did, I, she, it was her first time on campus mm -hmm. okay. and I had known him so we had a class together. And um, and so no, I first time I met her, but when I, we, we, when we first started talking it was you know, fireworks and amazing wow. because we were both interested in youth ministry and wow. um, we're so, so excited. Now you look like a football player. Were you, you do. Were you a football player? You I did. Do. You I look like a jock. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. I, I played football in West Texas, in Midland. Wow. Okay, all right. Augusta. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got any after effects? Uh, <laughs> I snap, crackle, and pop when I get out of bed, but other than that, I'm Isn't it doing amazing okay. how that works? Yes. Did you see that young guy's quitting with a billion dollar potential contract? Yes. Mm. yes. He said, I've had it. Yes. Well, he, he's had a lot, he's taken a lot of hits. I yeah. know. Yeah, Andrew yeah. Luck. Yeah. 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 Well, good. So, how long have you been married? 15 years, right? Yes. But we just celebrated 15 years. Did, did, did you guys, let me, let me just pick this number. After seven years, did you say this is going to work, or no, it's not what I thought it was? Oh I, no, we we were in it for the long haul. There were there were a couple of rough years. There's no doubt. Um, um, she put up with a lot of my mistakes, and and we kind of had to figure it out. But we absolutely mm -hmm. knew it. it was the best thing that ever happened to us, and we're yeah. in this to win yeah. it. Yes. Did did you fear mm -hmm. ever getting connected with a man again? Mm. Yes, yeah, so that was one thing in my first marriage, which was abusive. Yes. Um, I found the Lord and didn't want to do it wrong a second time. If God was going to give me a mate and if he wanted mm -hmm. me to marry again, yeah. after I met the Lord, I wanted to do exactly what the Bible says about yeah. building a relationship. And so when I met, met Eddie, of course, we, you know, nobody's perfect, but we followed the biblical principles mm. and that's you. year seven. They call it the seven year itch, I yes, think. Yes. Uh, we went, we, we, I think we probably had year seven and maybe year five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where we were like, wait, what, what do we yeah. do? Yeah. But we went back to biblical principles and that is the way that we have built our marriage, our life, our parenting. I love what Eddie said. Do. That wasn't an option. Yeah, it's yeah. not an option no. for that, us. That's what pe people get married. Yeah. That's their option. Yeah. 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 You guys be, could teach us. You've yeah. been married 60 yeah. years. Well, it should be no option. You're right. Yeah. There yeah. should be no option. Yes, ma'am. Because yeah. there's yeah. always, I think in today's culture, you can always find a reason. Well, I'm out of love with him. Yeah. Or I'm, yeah. Yeah. you know, this I is happening. To be happy. Or I'm yeah. not yeah. happy anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, our, I, I think we have made our mates gods rather yeah. than bowing down and serving the one true God who meets Good all of our needs. So, yeah, 15 years. Still going. <laughs> so we're Sorry. back to gangster yeah. prayer. Let, let me get into the book because the yeah. book is really something you need, something we all need, prayer. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, it, it, when you get into the area where you can't get enough prayer, mm. you're just about, you know, starting mm. yeah. because that has to be a part of your life. It really yeah. does. You say this in the book. I'm just quoting from your book. I'm going to do a little great go through the book. But uh, prayer fraud. That was what you called yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Explain that because reading the book, you know, I felt like I was a prayer fraud. Yeah. Mm. 
I use this line also in the book. I was a professional Christian with an amateur prayer life. Explain. I was living the life of a professional Christian, which I find in our culture, we all do, maybe, not all of us, yeah. but a lot of us have done at one point or another. If you're honest. If you're honest, yeah. if you're truly yeah. honest yeah. with yeah. yourself. Yep. I was raised in the church by by pastor. Um, who, he's still a pastor, my dad's still a pastor. He taught me all the principles of prayer. I listened to his sermons every Sunday morning. Uh, everyone looked at me, I think, as um, an example. And yet I knew in my heart I was a fraud. I would say, I'll pray for you and would never do it. I would, I would, <laughs> I would be asked yeah. to pray in groups just because of my position of pastor's daughter as a kid and wouldn't, would just try to impress the people that are listening to my prayers. Mm. I wasn't engaging the Almighty on my behalf. I wanted you to think I was holy. And so that day when God convicted me, you know, what are you doing? The gangsters are more passionate about evil than you are about prayer. Um, it convicted me in a way that was wonderful because it started to change my life. So how did it start? I mean, how did you start changing it at that point? That day, because I was offended by the Holy Spirit, which he does a really good job mm -hmm. at doing in a loving way. Um, but his, see, it, it is neat when I hear when, uh, you write it, but when I hear you say it, that you were at that place mm. where you knew you were faking it. Yeah. People don't even know they're faking it. I know, <laughs> I know. It's true. And this yeah. is a, a couple ways that you can tell. I, I would always look at maybe people like you and I would think, wow, God is answering their prayers but not mine. God is. God seems to answer everything they pray. So I'm going to ask them to pray for me because they have a direct line to the Lord. I would hear stuff like that. I would al almost get frustrated. I would get frustrated at God and mad at God because he wouldn't answer my, my prayers. And so I just would stop praying. Um, there was no drive in me to continue praying to, to God when I felt like he was listening to you and not me, and I was I was uh, jealous of your prayer life, and that's when it hit me. I have got to be doing something wrong here. I've got to peel back these layers of religion, of trying to impress you, just like the Pharisees did, right. um, and I need to actually engage heaven on my behalf. Take me there. How do you do that? Um, I started from ground zero. I was about 21 when this when this um, happened. I, I 21. 21. I went. I was in my first marriage. I went walking in a cemetery, and I 21 years been in church my whole life. Went walking in a cemetery, and I said, "Okay, today's the day." I'm actually going to engage God. I had got it. I just found out that he was real. I had actually just got saved when everyone thought I was saved when I was 11 years old in the privacy of, of my own home. And I walked in the cemetery and I said, okay, God. And then I stopped because I thought <laughs> I just messed up, you know, my big chance, my big break. And then I, I felt the grace of God say, I'm here. Talk to me as if. It's a normal relationship. And that started um, me learning that God is right with us and I can engage him. And then I had to work on my faith. And um, I remember saying, okay, God, I know you can hear me. Now will you work on, my, on behalf of my request? And so I would start asking God, um, listen, if you're here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for something ridiculous. Like I'm gonna ask for a man to walk into a 7-Eleven with a blue shirt on. And God would answer these tiny requests that no one knew I was well, he knew praying. Your, he knew your heart. You were but, kidding. But I was yeah. building my faith and my prayer life and my engagement with the Almighty. I've never heard that. And I learned, yeah. I learned that He is interested in every prayer, not just the big ones, every yeah. single one. If I needed to know that He was real by Him sending a man with a blue shirt on in 7 yeah. Eleven and it ignited my faith, he was going to operate on the level of faith that I had, and he was going to build it from there. Wow. I had to earn, unlearn a lot. 
I had to unlearn the, the pride we have sometimes um, of wanting to impress people. I had to learn, I, I used to get tripped up on, God, I'm not praying in your will. I'm scared I'm not praying in your will. You know, I, I went to a prayer meeting one time and all the women were like, if it's, if it's your will, if it's only your will, almost like they were terrified. And I'm like, Lord, help me with this. And one time the Spirit of God said to me, faith is my will, Autumn. Faith is my will. When you're praying in faith and you're praying in according to my word, faith is my will. And that built my faith even more. All the fear from praying um, according to the rules that religion had taught me melted out the window and I began to pray some crazy prayers. That, now you, you actually hold seminars about prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go and speak to churches um, about prayer all the time. You, you, you talk about the one you mm -hmm. said, I was invited to speak to this yes. latest ministry mm -hmm. and it was a prayer event. And, and beautiful church, mm -hmm. everything was pristine, yes. exact as it should be, mm -hmm. but you did not feel a spirit there. Yeah. How do, how do you walk into a situation like that? Because you were there, apparently mm -hmm. they knew they needed help, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a revival, yeah. yeah. So how do you approach that? Well, I, 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 wa I was so blessed to be invited to this church, to this woman's um, conference. Um, but when I got out of the car, I could sense an uneasiness in my spirit. And if the spirit of God is alive in you, he mm -hmm. speaks to you, yeah. he communicates with you. Um, right. And I was listening. Okay, God, I always ask, what does this church need from me? Why did you send me to serve in this capacity? They ushered me back into um, the room where all the leadership is, and it's so awesome. We had prayer before the show. We, they were having prayer before the conference. And I, I was sitting there praying with these ladies who were precious ladies, but they were saying, you know, Lord, um, only send the people that you want. Um, you know, if you don't, that's okay. Almost like we talked about earlier, there was a fear there. Um, you know, bless the refreshments and stuff. And, and all those things, they weren't, there was nothing bad about their prayer, but there was no passion. Yeah. Um, and I, I sat there as I was about to go speak three sessions for this conference. And I just had this holy unrest. I felt like the, the, the language of prayer had been dead at that church. They hadn't seen a move of God because maybe they hadn't been asking bold enough for it. And so I had to stop and I was like, do you mind if we stop? And I said, to this, Listen, group? To this gr group of leaders, yeah. do you mind if we stop? And I said, I did not come all the way from Dallas, Texas. And at that time we had two kids and leave my two kids to come and not see God move. I am expecting him to move. And so we grabbed hands, all the leaders, and I prayed one of those prayers that they probably thought I was crazy. Uh, but you know what? We started the day like that. And at the end of the day, I would say 90% of the women were coming forward, were confessing mm -hmm. sins, were mending relationships. The spirit right of through. God yeah. broke yeah. through and revival happened at that church that day. Um, but that's one of the underlying uh, line issues in our churches. P the prayer is dead yeah, yeah. Wow. or dying. Yeah. Well, and, and it's, it's the least attended part of the church. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if, if, if you call a prayer meeting, you've been to some of them, Eddie, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's like, I thought this was a big church. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, there's more in the bathroom on Sunday than right here. Yeah. But, but it, it is amazing how prayer is like why is it okay? You you, you do this yeah. and speak all over the place. But what have you gotten mm -hmm. that says why is it the least attended meeting? What is it? I I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Uh, I I I always go back to Jim Cimbala and his and his work yeah. and. Of New course, I, I was yeah. totally inspired, yeah. you know, by his uh, book, be. Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. Yes. I mean, he was really one of the ones yeah. that helped ignite my passion in prayer. And that's what we've seen. We've seen churches, oh, and, and a lot of them are doing them right. A lot a lot of people are oh, doing yes. this oh, right, yes. of oh, course. Yes. There's yeah. there's amazing yeah. churches out but there. But the, the reason you come to me 
many of mm -hmm. them is they, they need that yeah, help. They need the passion, they need the fire. And I've, I've seen, we've, we're spending hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars in production, and yet that same church, I'll say, well, when's your prayer meeting? And they don't have one. I was just gonna bring so that up. So we, we're right. spending yeah. millions yeah. of dollars yeah. on production you to look at attract the platform and people. The drums and, and the, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But <laughs> when you you when you when you spend that much money, make sure you're also having a free prayer meeting wow. where That's people good. can yeah. come yeah. and engage the God of the universe on behalf that? of them. How can we I'm flip that? I'm hoping this book is gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we, that be we wonderful? We have to. Yes. We have to. The reason I know that prayer is dying in our world today, I can see the symptoms of it. You can see we can see the evidence of it. Um, just the laws that have been passed in the last yeah. year yeah. about about um, yeah, abortion, yeah. the abortion laws. Look at the se sex trafficking issue that we're that we're hearing about. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence yeah. is running rampant, and mm -hmm. these men are getting slapped on the wrist. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the pedophilia that's going on through social media. Um, suicide rate is as a as a regular news story. I mean, we yeah, hear right. of someone committing suicide very regularly in our world today. So you cannot look at me and say prayer is alive and active mm. in every single believer. I believe that God is bigger than all of those issues. And if yeah. the church was truly to band together in prayer and say, you know what? We are going to pray against this sex trafficking issue Amen. globally. We are going to pray against this uh, abortion issue globally. We're going to come together. None of this, um, oh, you've got more people than me or I've stole your sheep or whatever, whatever the attitude is. If we were to come together globally and attack these things globally, I am telling you what, I don't think we would hear about them. But That's people so feel, feel, I mean, you complicated our, our, our uh, assistant, Linda Opsel. Yes. She prays so beautifully. Yes, but a does. lot of people can't pray. Mm -hmm. And so to come to a prayer gathering, mm -hmm. they feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. How do you get, how do you break through that? The intimidation of prayer. Yeah. In other words, in other words, okay, if I come, everybody's going to be praying. Right. I, 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 I want to come, mm -hmm. but, but I, I, I feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I, see, that's why it's a low attended. Yeah, I know. Okay, how know. do you? Because nobody feels uncomfortable about coming to a big praise. You know, everybody yeah. with their hands going yeah. and <laughs> jumping, and every, everybody can even an introvert can get in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but prayer. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole different category. How desperate are you, is what I would say. Hmm. When God convicted me of my prayer life, he also told me this line that is in the book, what's a miracle to them, Autumn, what they call a miracle can be your normal life. Yeah. Wow. What's a miracle to them can be called your normal life. We get thousands of messages through our ministry and you guys probably do too of my life is this my life is that my life is not adding up i don't feel like god is intervening look at jesus's life in the new testament everywhere he walked he gave that same power of the holy spirit to his disciples what was a miracle to them was the disciples and jesus's everyday life when the Spirit of God spoke that to me and I started looking at these examples in scripture, I thought, I want that for myself. I don't want you to live a life of miracles and me not to live a life of miracles. What, I'm here one time, I'm not gonna waste my life. And I started to become so desperate. I didn't care what people think. And let me tell you, people have thought I'm crazy sometimes when I prayed, especially in my car. My car prayers are crazy, okay? Um, you should I, have a little, one of those, go cameras. You know? yeah. Well, now yeah. I feel like people just think that I'm talking to someone on Bluetooth and really I'm <laughs> okay. talking to the yeah. Lord. Um, but how desperate are you? Are, do you want to actually have miracles a part of your everyday life? Or are you content with a life where you don't see God engage? I got to a place where my self-esteem, what people thought of me, um, was nothing compared to my huge desire to see God interact in my behalf. Now, Eddie, did you come along with her on this prayer trip that she went on? Or did she just drag you? No, I, no, absolutely. <laughs> uh, prayer has been a part of our life, but I actually have learned a lot from her. I, and I've grown in that. And, and um, uh, she she wrote about me in one of the chapters because I got to a point in our life and there were, there were some things just kind of crumbling around us mm -hmm. in, our, in our business. And I got to a point where I had to get desperate. I had to mm -hmm. get crazy. I Or... You know, there was a lot at stake, a lot of things that what were is your going business? to. 
um, we own a Mary Maids, and um, this this was a uh, what is that again? Mary Maids. It's a cleaning company. Yeah, it's wow. a cleaning company. And wow. um, That's this was business. a different one, um, but there was at that point it was 30 jobs at stake. There was our family and investments, and okay. so. Um, I had to get gangster. Um, so I, I have grown and I have learned um, and she, she, she got there first and mm -hmm. even though, again, I've been a Christian for a long time, I've learned so much from her. And, but I've had to do it. I've had to engage mm -hmm. that part of me that was dormant, that, mm -hmm. that was asleep. Um, because I needed God Almighty to move in our situation, and so I the the wimpy prayers wouldn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah. we had to do something yeah, I about it. Like that it. statement, mm -hmm. you, you were standing by your father mm -hmm. in a open heart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. operation. Yeah, take us to that place. I uh, my dad's had heart problems since he was forty years old, and I'm approaching forty. So you yeah. know, I'm like, oh no, yeah. we got to start praying Get about behind that. Me. We got to yeah. we got to yeah. start praying about that. Um, but I remember um, sitting there. He had had uh, atrial fibrillation, which a lot of people uh, struggle with, and he'd had it for seven years. And he's also he had also had, had several heart attacks. And they ask um, to do an open heart uh, surgery on him and bypass surgery on him. And I believe the Spirit of God told me this is how I'm going to heal him. Um, and he had told me he was going to heal him years before. But I believe he had to go through the surgery. And I remember sitting over his head. Of course, all of our families in the room, all, my family are big Christians. We're crazy big Christians. Yeah. And um, I remember him looking at me and I said, Dad, you're going to be okay. Very confidently because I knew what God had told me. And he looked at me and he said, are you sure? And I was <laughs> able to look at him, grab his hand and said, you are going to be Just like that. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, absolutely no yeah. doubt in my mind. Yeah. And um, that was the uh, operation that completely cured him of atrial fibrillation, which he has suffered from for seven years. And he's not had a heart it's attack gone. since. It's gone. Yes. And it That's was what some... you, you had in your book, <coughs> Spiritual Confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. God had given <coughs> me, and this is a, a thing that where sometimes um, God asks us to um, persist in prayer. We have to pray a lot of times about something before it happens. Don't give up. And one of the things that God taught me to do um, in prayer is when you believe the Spirit of God is telling you, your dad will be healed, find a scripture that backs up what the Spirit of God is saying because the Spirit of God and the Word of God will never contradict themselves right. ever. Right. So when I felt like God said, um, I'm going to heal your dad. This is years before the operation took place, but I had a scripture to lean on whenever he did have another heart attack in the near future. I could go back and say, nope, God is going to heal my dad. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I am going to stand on this scripture. And I call it scriptural confirmation in the book because it's a concrete thing for a human finite mind to stand on when we don't see the evidence of, of God at work. We could go on and on. <laughs> like the good. gangsters. Yeah. But, but uh, this is your opportunity to go to that website, order your book. Uh, this will, in, in some people that will read it will give that spark. That's what you need many times. Mm. And I read a lot. Yeah. And every once in a while, and you get kind of stale in some of the books you read, or whatever, and all of a sudden you'll get to one. Mm. Randy Alcorn is one of my favorite mm. authors. And I'll read one of his books and I'll it's just the spark I needed. Mm. And that's what this can be for you. Mm. Because maybe you, like Autumn, are in that area where you say, you know, I'm mechanically praying. Yeah. Oh, that's mm. that's yeah. that's so bad. Mm. But you know what? At least you've identified it. Yeah. And once you get to that place, grab, order, start reading. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna take you to that next level. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.